Melanie Mac is a channel that I haven't covered before. However, I feel like I should have because she's a fast-growing nerd channel that has dedicated themselves to making anti-woke content. Essentially, she realized how profitable it is to make content about wokeness and how it's the death of modern nerd culture. Because when she says this, then all the bigots in her audience can slap their meat around while she gives them the validation that they so desperately crave. One look at her channel should instantly reveal exactly what her content is about. We of Indiana Jones goes woke in the Dial of Destiny. Overshadowed by a girl. Or, a new queer western appears, strange way of life. Why is everything gay? Disturbing trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. This is demonic. Writing your memoirs? Don't forget the hyphen between spider and man. We also have some anti-gay content in Don't like it, don't watch it, says The Last of Us actress on another gay episode. Another gay filler episode? And what would an anti-woke channel be without some Brie Larson hate? Brie Larson is mad again. The Marvel's delay rumor. Why so mad? So basically, the type of content she makes is really no different from your typical cringe anti-woke channels that milk bigotry for views and money. And if you think this is a leap, then look no further than her appearances on Friday Night Tights as evidence. She willingly associates herself with channels like The Quartering, RK Outpost, Geeks and Gamers, and is fine with appearing on the same show that has platformed Alex Jones and Gavin McGuinness, the founder of The Proud Boys, an all-male far-right extremist neo-fascist group. And that's not an over-exaggeration. Melanie is fine with being buddies with people like this, and she even makes the same kind of far-right embracing content as they do. And please understand the distinction here. I'm not saying that Melanie's a bigot, I don't know. I haven't watched nearly enough of her content to make an estimation like that. However, this type of content promotes bigotry. It profits off of people who don't like seeing gay characters on screen, or who hate trans people, or who don't like women being capable in media. This is not a reach, it's what happens when you make content like this. Even if you yourself are not ideologically bigoted, content like this will ultimately attract these types of people. So when I say that Melanie's content is the same as other anti-woke channels, and that their effects are harmful, then that's mostly what I'm referring to. I do think there's overlap between making anti-woke content and actually being a far-right person yourself, but whether that's actually the case for someone like Melanie doesn't matter, because her actions speak louder than anything else. However, what good is my commentary without looking at her commentary? So that's what we'll do now. Right after you've liked this video and checked out my Patreon, of course, because why wouldn't you? Nevertheless, looking through her channel, there's a lot of cringe to cover. However, for today, I thought we'd start with this video titled, Horizons Alloy Goes Woke Again. Ugly Girlfriends, predictable. Now for some context, about a year ago when Horizon Forbidden West came out, some select weirdos on the internet called the game woke because Alloy, the main character, had supposedly been made ugly to satisfy the woke crowd because apparently beautiful women aren't allowed in the woke dystopia. Obviously, this was complete hysteria, either from basement dwellers who have never been close enough to a woman to understand that most human beings have hair all over their bodies, including their faces, or from channels like Melanie Mac who claims that wokeness means not having beautiful women anymore. It's likely a trickle-down effect from Gamergate, but that's a discussion for another time. However, this is what Melanie Mac is referring to in the beginning of her video. The same routine continues. Take a beautiful female lead video game character, make her uglier, then turn her into a lesbian. Why this is a thing? I don't know, but we've just seen it happen with Aloy in the Horizon series, and according to the leaks, this is also happening with Lara Croft as well with Tomb Raider. When she says Alloy goes woke again, she's saying that at first they made Alloy ugly, which is an incredibly subjective opinion and a claim based on what evidence exactly. Also, most of the pictures used to criticize Aloy's looks were from a dated PlayStation state of play. And when you actually play the game, which Melanie Mac admits she hasn't, then you can see that anyone who makes this Aloy is ugly now argument is just full of shit. We'll get more into this specific debate later, however now, they've also given Alloy a girlfriend, 
whom you can choose to kiss at the end of the new DLC. This is what Melanie's referring to when she calls Aloy woke again. Now the word woke can mean different things depending on who's using the word. I have a whole video on the meaninglessness of the word. Now finding a common understanding of it is pretty difficult to do. However, all we need to understand is how Melanie uses the word and what she means by it. And given this video titled woke ideology is satanic, I think it's pretty safe to say that she sees wokeness as something sinful, because for a religious person, which Melanie claims to be, I can only assume that something being satanic would be the worst of the worst. So according to her own logic, Aloy looking like honestly a realistic woman and liking other girls means that she's an allegory to Satan. If you think I'm being uncharitable with my characterizations of her beliefs, then look no further than the sources she uses. This whole video and in a lot of her other videos, she's reading an article from the website Bounding Into Comics. And at first thought, this seems like a normal, trustworthy website for comic news, but it's so much more than that. And honestly, not even that much about comics anymore. Over on the Fandom Initiative channel, we made a more in-depth video on bounding into comics, but I also just want to discuss it a bit here, because it is important in order to understand how deep the Melanie Mac rabbit hole actually is. So the website was founded by John F. Trent, who also writes a lot of the articles on there. And when I show you some of these articles, you'll see just how unhinged he actually is. This first article is titled, Sony Pictures Promotes Child Mutilation in Latest Trailer for Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse with Protect Trans Kids Flag. This is not just a regular news article that in an unbiased way outlines what has happened exactly, it's heavily skewed as anti-trans. I have a whole video on this Spider-Verse trailer thing, where I spend a lot of time debunking all these claims of child mutilation, stating, based on the available research that we have, that gender-affirming care is incredibly beneficial towards the mental health well-being and happiness of trans people, including trans kids, whereas discrimination, lack of acceptance and validation, and the banning of gender-affirming healthcare significantly decreases the well-being, mental health, and happiness of trans people. Rhetoric like this is aiding in making lives worse for trans people. It's aiding in hurting children. And if you for some reason thought that he would use scientific evidence to support his anti-trans message, then you'd be sorely mistaken. He cites this random-ass bishop as evidence for why being transgender goes against God's will. And I just quickly want to mention before people try to strawman me, I am not saying that religion is bad. I actually think religion provides a lot of benefits to a lot of people. If living your best life means believing in a god and shaping your life according to scriptures, then absolutely go do that, as long as you don't try to push that lifestyle on other people, or try to push your religion as facts because it isn't. When we discuss what the truth of something is, we look at science, we look at research, we don't look at religion to say what is and isn't true, because there's no evidence to back whichever claims are made. If you choose to be religious and let it impact your life, then all the power in the world to you. But once you start using religion to control how other people should live their lives, or to say that gay and trans people are sinful and shouldn't be accepted, that's when I begin to have a problem with religion. And so when a news source for nerd content spreads hateful rhetoric towards trans people on the sole basis of what some random ass old Catholic bishops say without using any real evidence, then that becomes really fucking alarming. Because so many so-called nerd channels use this site as a source, and if you aren't aware of what Bounding Into Comics actually is, then you'll think that these channels are using a credible news source, rather than a bigoted website that pushes hateful ideas. It's the same thing with this article, the CW's The Flash goes full groomer pushes multiple objective lies including trans is beautiful and protect trans kids. This is again baseless anti-trans rhetoric hidden behind this veil of being nerd content. And again he uses Bishop Michael Burbage as his major source. Like who is this guy? Or this article where Trent claims that Willow normalizes sodomy. At least here he doesn't cite fucking Bishop Michael Burbage but he still openly lies about Willow to push an anti-gay agenda. This is dishonest and it's hateful, and if you can't see that then I'm sorry, but you've either fallen deep into this rabbit hole or you're just as bad yourself. And if you want a last piece of evidence to nail down the quality of journalism at display over at Bounding Into Comics, and also most of the anti-woke channels, then here's Nerd Rod exciting a Bounding Into Comics article, which he does quite often, but when you go to the article itself, you'll notice that the article cites Nerd Roddick. This is explicit evidence that the anti-woke space on the internet 
is just an echo chamber. And I don't think too many people realize this. I think there are a lot of fans who genuinely don't see the grift. They think these channels are actually just passionate nerd channels rather than far-right grifters. There are plenty of devoted believers, don't get me wrong, but I really hope that I can open at least some people's eyes up to what's really happening here. The scary part is that when you look at the about section on Bounding Into Comics, then there is no mention of their political or religious angle at all. They simply paint themselves as a nerd website that provides scoops and leaks. And this especially caught my attention. Our team does not rush to publish information without regard to accuracy. Ah, yes. Definitely not like when you rush to publish information with your source being nerdrotic or speaking on transgender issues by using some random ass bishop, rather than the mounds of existing research that supports the validity of trans people and gender affirming care. Yup, you definitely care about publishing accurate information. The dishonesty on display here is truly baffling, and I hope that you've now gained an appreciation for just how deceitful and hateful bounding into comics is. And if you care in any way about journalistic integrity or even just about honesty, then this website being used as a truthful and reliable source for news about nerd culture by a lot of pretty massive channels should raise major red flags for you. Anything that comes out of the mouth of someone citing bounding into comics should immediately be questioned. And you should acknowledge that the information provided is heavily biased in favor of dishonest far-right religion-based politics. And so when Melanie Mac uses this website for her videos, then you should know exactly the kind of ideology and rhetoric that's supporting her arguments. However, I feel like I've laid enough groundwork now to explain the ideology of Melanie Mac's content, because I think it not only showcases the problematic ideas she has, but also how hilarious some of her argumentation is. Let's get into it. Because a new a D the DLC dropped uh, for Horizon Forbidden West, and now she's attracted to women, okay, all of a sudden, because that's just the new thing to do. Straight female lead characters can't exist in action genres anymore. It's just where we're at right now. Straight female lead characters can't exist in action dramas anymore? Hmm, let's test that hypothesis. It seems your claim is just a little bit off. Now the real question is, why do you get so mad when a character is gay? Yes, that's a loaded question. I know. That was the point. Also, I can imagine someone defending her by saying that all the examples I gave are more examples of woke women, and that there are no more strong, beautiful, and straight, non-woke female characters anymore like, say, Ellen Ripley from Aliens. That movie was so unwoke. Why don't they make movies like that anymore? However, whenever they do make a strong female characters nowadays, these people will complain nonetheless. Basically, they just don't want strong women in general. And if this is you, then would you kindly grow up? However, she then goes on to read the whole article, which is just riveting content. It's the same kind of content that, say, Geeks and Gamers makes, where they open up one of these far-right articles disguised as nerd news sources to grift their audiences. She basically just rambles on for a while without really saying anything substantial. The article is basically just a summary of the DLC. She talks about how she loved Horizon Zero Dawn, but didn't like Forbidden West, despite not playing it. Now, one thing is, I actually was a huge, 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 huge fan of Horizon Zero Dawn. It was one of my favorite games ever. I freaking loved it. And I haven't even played Forbidden West yet. Now, the reason why is because I was severely disappointed in a lot of what they've done with Aloy's character. And I haven't even played Forbidden West yet. And it's pretty stale for a while, but then she says something pretty unhinged. I'll let the clip run for quite a while so that you get the full context. I loved Horizon Zero Dawn, but... I mean, one of the big reasons why I loved it so much is you had like this cool, strong, beautiful female lead character there. And y'all know I love games with good, with a good female lead that does it right. And I feel like uh, Horizon Zero Dawn for the most part did that. But then once the Horizon Forbidden West trailers started dropping and stuff, I noticed they were giving her a hero complex to where it was like, Oh, she wants to be like a savior of the world, essentially. She wants to be a hero. And I don't like it when they do that, especially with female characters, because it's not... It's not something that is natural for women in the same way that it is more for... That it can be for men. You know, it's a masculine thing to... 
help to like save people dude like to be a hero that's a masculine thing so for a female lead character i mean there are certain situations where it's like okay you know she's strong she's capable and she's gonna do what's right for this situation i get that but for just wanting to be a hero for the sake of being a hero that is just that's not a feminine quality it's not a feminine trait and it just uh comes off as weird to me uh, it's a masculine thing to help to like save people dude like wanting to be a hero is not natural for women this is fucking unhinged i'm genuinely baffled at how ignorant this statement is she says that it's a masculine thing to save people and that if a female character wants to be a hero then that's not feminine this is such a weird thing to say because it's basically just limiting women and obviously she has nothing to back up what she's saying and i honestly wasn't expecting her to so we have to take her argument for what it is is. Basically, what she's saying is that if Aloy was a man and had the same exact character, then she wouldn't have a problem with it, right? That's at least the logical conclusion that I'm making from what she's saying. To claim that wanting to save people is a masculine trait and not something that's normal for women, it plays right into gender stereotypes. That men are the saviors, when yes, there are a lot of men out there who save people. But that's also the case for women. Women save people every fucking day. Listen, if I'm in a dire situation and someone comes to save me, I don't give a flying fuck whether that person is a man or a woman. I'm just happy that person decided that they felt like saving someone that day. This argument is unfortunate unfathomably stupid and degrading. It's fine if you have these standards for yourself that you don't personally want to be a savior because in your mind, that's not a feminine quality, that's fine. But you're saying this in a general manner, that saving people is inherently masculine rather than feminine. And I know that men and women can both be masculine and feminine, but that's not part of her argument, because otherwise she'd acknowledge that Aloy has a lot of traditionally masculine traits. No, when she says feminine and masculine, she's referring to women and men. And she's criticizing the fact that Aloy wants to save the world on the basis of her being a woman, when that would be fine if she was a man. This argument is stupid, so let's just move on. She then mentions that her problem is the love interest in general. This is just stupid me. <laughs> I would, uh, you know, and I wouldn't even have liked it if they gave her a male love interest in these things too, because it's just like, it depends on the character and there's certain stories that they're built around, um, you know, having the love interest there and that can be great. But when it comes to Tomb Raider, for example, I don't want to see a love interest. That is about Lara Croft doing her adventuring and all that kind of stuff. And with Horizon, I kind of feel a similar kind of way to where it's like, I like the focus to be on adventure. And this is fine by itself. Not everyone wants a romantic subplot in their video games. Not every romantic subplot is well written. It's fine if you don't like this romance or dislike it for that matter. However, I just don't believe her when she says that this is about Aloy having a love interest in general and that she'd feel the same way if it was a guy. Because her video is about Horizon being woke. She has multiple times mentioned that her problem here is that they've made Aloy lesbian. Or bisexual, we don't know yet. She also constantly complains about gay characters in media on her channel. So her painting the problem out to be the romance in general, rather than the fact that it's a lesbian romance, I'd say is dishonest. This is clearly not why she's making the video. It's not a criticism of the romance itself. It's a way for her to get clicks by fueling the outrage a lot of people have about gay representation in media. Because they can't stand to watch something that goes against their weird worldviews. And you know that, Melanie. You know that very well. First, let's look at this picture here. First, they take a beautiful character and then they make her uglier. This has been a constant pattern with existing female characters in video games, okay? We've seen the same with Lara Croft. Take a beautiful character and make her uglier. Okay, this made me burst out laughing. This was the best example she could come up with to support her argument that they made Lara Croft uglier by going from this to this. Because this is apparently the gold standard of human beauty. How could they do this to our pixelated queen? Now even engaging with dumb arguments like these is probably worthless, but I'll do it either way. If you actually look at Lara Croft in the new games, she looks like this. Look at me straight in the eyes 
and tell me that she isn't pretty. Also, here's a controversial opinion, and I'm sorry my fellow gamers, if you need to crucify me then so be it. But I think that Lara Croft in this photo is more attractive than in this one. What? How could I say such slander? Basically, when people complain about female characters being made ugly in modern video games, all they're really saying is that women aren't being objectified as heavily anymore. And this makes them mad. They're mad that Lara Croft now looks like a realistic person, rather than having massive jugs that would absolutely be a pain in the ass if you were an adventurer like her. Same thing with Aloy, people are mad she was made to look more realistic and mature than she did in the first game, which was a natural change since the graphics and facial animations improved drastically and because they were able to do full mocap, which will make Aloy look more like a real person. And just remember that this is what Aloy actually looks like. The pictures that Melanie complains about are the same pictures that everyone was raging about when the game was first releasing, and they aren't even accurate. Because I admit, these are very unfortunate photos. She does look funny, but these are freeze frames from the PlayStation State of Play for Horizon Forbidden West, which was showing an unfinished product. If you actually play the game, then you can see that Aloy Aloy does not look like this. At the end of the day, beauty standards are subjective. We all find different things attractive, but complaining that all female video characters don't all look like this has nothing to do with so-called uglifying women, and rather has everything to do with people being upset that they don't get to play as an OnlyFans model. And Melanie purposefully makes content that validates these concerns from very, 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 horny individuals. Anyways, let's move on. The one reason why I feel like they do this is because they're like they're scared they're terrified of the male gaze as they say and so they don't want to make their female characters attractive because they're scared to death a guy will find her attractive Apparently, that's a crime to them. Scared of the male gaze. Now, this is mostly bullshit, mainly because the foundation she has laid is made of sand. Even taken into regard subjective opinions on beauty, Aloy is still conventionally attractive. Yes, she does not look like a flawless anime character or a doll with plastic surgery and makeup. She looks like a real person, which you'd know if you've played the game. Which again, because I think this is a significant point, Melanie says herself, that she hasn't. She's basing her opinions on screenshots, and screenshots don't always do people justice. I think we can all attest to that. However, Aloy and Seika are probably still more attractive than you'd imagine people would be in a post-apocalyptic world filled with robot dinosaurs. Now there is some discussion to be had here about the whole not wanting to adhere to the male gaze debacle, and this was a pretty significant debate during the time of Gamergate, where the argument was that video games played into the male fantasy, and that it led to most female characters being overly sexualized, having to show a lot of skin, and overall being centered around lust from the player. And I think these were valid complaints because it's true. Women have throughout most media history been way more sexualized than men have, and more attention being placed on giving women more agency and not only defining them by their sexual characteristics is a pretty good thing to do in my opinion. However, this doesn't mean that female characters aren't still pretty or that there's some push to purposefully make women uglier in video games just to avoid the male gaze. Perhaps, and stay with me here, perhaps more and more video games are making their characters look realistic, rather than look like the very epitome of beauty. Perhaps there's no malicious intent behind making Lara Croft look like a regular person, who still happens to be conventionally attractive. This just seems like an incredibly insignificant thing to get mad about. Initially, I mean, that's kind of a male fantasy to see girls kissing but they want to see like hot girls kissing now this is goes this is outside of like the christian realm i'm a christian um but this so obviously anybody who's a christian um that sort of thing goes against that but you know in the secular world this is a male fantasy type thing so because of that they have to make aloy uglier because you're already going to have two girls kissing and they don't want to appeal to the men. So they had to make Aloy uglier and they had to make this girl look like a dude. 
pretty much. She does not look like a man. They're both attractive, and you're just reaching for something to hold on to because you know that you have no fucking argument. However, this is where the drama started between Melanie Mack and Kylie Leah Page, the actor who plays Seika, who made a video responding to Melanie, which Melanie then replied back to. It's not the best counter from Kylie because there isn't really much argumentation, which makes it easy for a dishonest person like Melanie to counter. But you can understand why Kylie would want to clap back. Melanie is calling Kylie's character ugly, speaking about the gay kiss in a negative manner, and is overall making a very pathetic video that pushes some harmful rhetoric. This is absolutely a video worth calling out, and it's always nice to see actors and actresses dunk on chuds. I just hope she hasn't received even more hate because of it. However, I'm not gonna get too much into this debate because I don't need to. This video speaks for itself. Melanie Mack is a bad person who has sold her integrity for a little bit of clout. She's fine with promoting a website that spews inaccurate, far-right extremist rhetoric. She's fine with dishonestly commentating on a game that she admits she hasn't played. And she's fine with labeling any kind of representation, be it trans people, gay people, black people, and women, as woke, and then also attributing wokeness to Satanism. This is not a call to go and attack or harass Melanie or her fans. Anyone who does that is part of the problem. However, this is a call for us to understand the negative effect this type of content can have on nerd culture, and just online culture in general. We need to be aware of hateful and bigoted misinformation, and we as fans of nerdy things need to have standards. This is not valid criticism of a piece of media. This is someone basking in the outrage that is constantly ongoing from people with reactionary ideologies. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my Patreons, including Ben Joseph and Nicholas. I'll be back with more videos soon, I promise. But for now, like the video, support me on Patreon, and peace out.